Hey guys, welcome back to the Web3 course playlist. In this video, we want to talk about blockchain consensus. But before that, I want to show you what blockchains look like, how they act like, and then uh, we'll talk about this. It'll make much more sense. So for that, I want to give you a demo quickly. Uh, it's on this website called andersbrownsworth.com. And uh, you can also go to this website after this video. It has multiple tabs. So the first tab is called hash. On this hash tab, you can just enter any data and see that the hash changes. So, so the, the important thing here is that even if there's no data, there's still still some hash, there's some representation of zero, uh, like empty data as well. And that's a feature of this hash, which is the start 256 algorithm. And uh, if you have a lot of data also, so it doesn't matter if you have like 10 uh, you know, digits or if you have like a lot of characters also, the length of the hash will always be the same. And that's again, another feature of um, you know this algorithm now the the last feature that I want to show you about the algorithm is like let's say there is I've written a kill here okay and there is some hash right and if I even if I add just one more digit the entire hash changes there is no similarity between the earlier hash and this hash so you can't have like a one is to one relationship between the hash uh, the data and the hash and that's why there is no way to actually reproduce it uh, very easily it's very difficult to reproduce the data data back from the hash and, and also because like i showed you you know there's if there's so much data that you enter and all of this data is just represented by uh, a very small hash right even if this data is way more and you can uh, you know add a lot of basically a lot of paragraphs here there is obviously a mathematical limit to this but um, you can add like thousands of characters and still the length of the hash won't change. So these are three important features I want to I want uh, you to see. And this is basically the backbone of uh, the blockchain. So before we get into the blockchain, let's see what a block is. The block basically is something that has its own number. So this is the first block and has something called as number only used once, nuns. Then it has data and it has a hash. So you change the data here, you add some data and that's how you add data in a block. The hash changes. And now uh, we'll mine this block. So when we mine it, what happens basically is that it tries to find uh, nuns that matches that they'll give you the first four digits as zero. Why? Because that's the default state of this block. So always whenever we change the date, uh, the data, uh, whenever we mine it, it basically goes from zero and all the way to it. It had to go all the way till, uh, till this digit to find a hash which had the first four digits at zero. So even if we add something more, now again, the hash is ruined. We mine it again and again the first four digits as you can see four, 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 four or five digits have become zero and it had to go from zero to nine nine thousand eight one nine so it went like that right now my processor is fast so <laughs> it's, it's able to go that quickly but if you if you're using it on a slower machine it'll take a while uh, it'll take a while to load and uh, you know show you this anyhow then uh, with, now that you understand what are blocks block chains are basically uh, chains of those blocks in the sense that in your uh, you have multiple blocks. So let's say the block, block number two is going to have the previous hash. So the hash of this previous chain will be stored here. So you can see here, you can compare four times zero, one, five, seven, blah, 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 and four times zero, one, five, seven, blah, blah, blah. So this previous is basically storing the hash of the pre uh, previous block and hash is its own hash. So every block has its own hash that we have seen, already seen and also has the previous hash. Okay. Now, uh, you can see here that the previous hash for this block is zero because obviously there is no block before it. So if you add any data here, whenever as soon as I add some data here, the hash will change. If the hash will change, uh, the hash everywhere changes, right? Because this is storing the previous hash. And that's why the entire blockchain goes out of sync. And this is why it's very difficult to hack entire blockchains because then you will have to, to be, bring the blockchain back into sync will have to mine every single block and you can only do it sequentially because you can only do it sequentially because every block is storing the hash of the previous block. So now everything is green now. That means the whole blockchain is again, again in sync. Uh, this is still just one level of complexity in the sense that the blockchain is stored in one place, but that's still uh, centralized, right? But blockchains are very decentralized in the sense, even though it's, it's a blockchain, there are the blockchains are stored at multiple locations which are known as peers so you can also go ahead and become a peer of uh, a blockchain that means you'll be storing the entire copy of the blockchain you'll obviously need some uh, system requirements before you do anything, anything like that but if you have the system requirements if you meet those requirements then you can um, go ahead and join a blockchain now here uh, what we saw there is that even if you have very very fast pc you can still uh, you know go and 
uh, mine all of these within a few seconds, right, very quickly. Uh, but the problem arises, uh, and, and this is why blockchains are so secure, is that if this whole blockchain, you are able to mine it quickly, right, in, within seconds, the the rest of the, uh, you know, the other, uh, there are still multiple copies of the blockchain with other people. So you can see that other peers have the same copy of the blockchain. And now that you see, uh, when you compare these hashes, right here, you can see it's uh, four times zero and then double two, double four. But here with peer B is four times zero, one five seven. With peer C, it's four times zero, one five seven. So that means that these two blockchains are the same, whereas this has gone out of sync. This one looks different. And this is why blockchains would know, the system would know that, hey, uh, there's something wrong with this peer's blockchain. He's trying to edit data. He's trying to add, give himself some currency and some coins. Don't listen to him. He's <laughs> this, is the, this is the corrupted blockchain. So this is why when you have more peers showing you the right blockchain, you can easily default to that version of the blockchain. And to be able to default to a particular version of blockchain, there are multiple algorithms that are called as consensus algorithms. That hey, you know, uh, this block is the one that has to be added after this blockchain, or uh, this is the actual version of the blockchain that we should be going by. And um, you know, here there are still two of these blockchains that are two of these peers who have the right blockchain, but it could be that, you know, one peer will have more weightage than the other peer. So that could depend on, let's say, what kind of algorithm this blockchain is following. Is it following the proof of stake, proof of work and so on. So uh, with tokens, so when you click on this tab called tokens, it's basically showing you how the transactions look like. So what we, sh what we saw here with the earlier blockchain was that there could be any data, but here it shows you more pro a proper visualization of with the actual kind of data that is stored in a blockchain, which is basically transactional data. And here, uh, what uh, hackers uh, kind of try to do is they try to change that, hey, if this guy is Ash, let's say Ash wants more money, he's going to say instead of $48, he got $488. Now the whole blockchain goes out of sync. And even if you mine this whole thing, it's difficult to, um, you know, it's difficult to, so it's taking a, taking a while because it's going from zero to, you know, uh, 230,488. So uh, even if you block the, uh, like mine the whole blockchain, it, it's still not matching with the other peers. And this is where it's easy to catch catch this whole uh, blockchain as, as a corrupted blockchain. And this is something that they won't follow, the other peers. And the other peers, like I said, they have a consensus. They're all coordinating, they're all communicating with each other as to what is the right uh, state of this blockchain, the current state. And it's quite complex. It, it sounds really simple, but there's a lot of stuff happening and it's all happening within fractions of seconds. So this was the uh, blockchain demo. Now, now coming back here, uh, all of these consensus algorithms will have to go one by one, but this is not the video for it, right? We'll be going through each of these one by one uh, in the later videos. But I just want to tell you that what we were doing right now, uh, where we were mining uh, that block, right? So our PC was fast, so it was able to mine those blocks really quickly. That's called as proof of work in the sense all of the uh, you know peers, they have to uh, mine these blocks and the faster somebody uh, mines it, or, or solves this cryptography problem and it's it's th there's no faster or smarter way to solve this cryptography problem you everybody has to go from zero to that point that's why more processing power is required and this is why they say that blockchains the proof of uh, work blockchains are not green enough because it requires a lot of electricity uh, everybody in the network is trying to solve those problems basically mine those blocks and the faster somebody does it the better but but everybody has to do it so that's why everybody's electricity gets uh, consumed so that's why this they say proof of work is not very uh, green proof of stake basically means that somebody who has more of more coins uh, or or more stake in the um, in the complete blockchain they get to uh, say they they have a say so like i said you know uh, earlier that uh, there could be a peer who has more weightage so more weightage will be given to that peer he'll get to decide proof of capacity basically says how much cap uh, processing power and capacity you have proof of burn is that how many uh, coins you can burn so these four are kind of important how many coins you can burn how, many, how much currency you can burn or how much token basically you can burn to show that you have uh, the most you know uh, ability to burn these tokens and you have the, your best interest at heart and that's why you you should be the one who should be uh, getting to decide uh, what should be the next block in the blockchain so these are the four important ones um, then you have proof of elapsed time this is also kind of important where um, all of the uh, peers they're given a random wait time and the the guy uh, whose random wait time gets uh, 
done faster, he gets to add the next block. Now, proof of stake, proof of elapsed time, proof of capacity, proof of burn, these are not, uh, these are kind of green in the sense they're not uh, as resource intensive as proof of work because here all of the players have to do it. Proof of stake, what happens is that only the few selected players who have more stake, they get to uh, decide the state of the blockchain. So, but the problem with proof of stake, some people say, is that it kind of makes things a little more centralized rather than decentralized. Uh, but there are many other uh, things like you know, relegated proof of stake and least proof of stake, uh, all of these which uh, help us to uh, go away from those problems. We'll discuss all of these uh, consensus algorithms in, in more details. Today, I just want to show you what they are. And uh, when you hear the word consensus, what does it mean? This is basically what it means. So it's you have a blockchain, you have these miners, and then you know, all of them are racing. So this is what's happening in the block, in, in Bitcoin at least, the proof of work ones, right? All of them are trying to mine it, the next block. So um, uh, within that one second, the race starts and when the race ends, uh, new block uh, has to be added to the blockchain, but the winning miner gets to decide who will add the next block to the blockchain. Now the winning miner also gets uh, the reward and the chance to add block to the blockchain. The reward is Bitcoins, basically he gets Bitcoins, right? So this is what's happening. Now you can see that there's so many connections open with so many different miners and it's very difficult to um, build a system like this and, they, and you know, blockchain uh, and all these blockchain companies have built these kind of systems. They're quite complex systems, but it's, uh, it's working perfectly fine. And this is how consensus takes place. And this is the uh, reason why you need consensus because everybody then will copy that same blockchain to their own, uh, to, to all the peers will then copy the, the newest state of the blockchain with the newest uh, block so that everybody again will uh, you know, be in the same, uh, on the same page. And, and, and similarly, whenever a new transaction happens, all of the miners will try to add the next block and then similarly the winning miner will get to add the new block and all the other uh, peers will then uh, add the new block to the blockchain okay so i hope this video was informative and we'll um, you know we'll be talking about gaming on blockchain in the next video so things are going to get exciting thanks a lot for watching do subscribe and i'll see you in the next video